G'day guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Space Engineers video. So in today's video what we're going to be doing is taking a look at all of the blocks that were added in the recent Warfare 2 update. So all the blocks we have on the left hand side here are basically blocks that are available for free and all the blocks we have on the right there are all of the paid DLC blocks. So let's get started with these weapons but before I go over each individual weapon I just wanted to point something out so Keen Software have added a lot of different features to the way that weapons target um, so take these turrets here for example these turrets as you can see here for this auto cannon turret here this auto cannon turret has a range of 1.4 kilometers but the AI targeting range is only 800 meters. So basically what that means is that if you are to control this turret manually, then you can shoot anything up to 1.4 kilometers and the shell will hit it. Um, whereas if you leave this turret alone and you don't control it, then basically it will only be able to attack targets that come within an 800 meter range. Now also what you can do is you can use a feature that they've added as well. You can kind of see that little green circle that is attached to that block over there. So basically once you lock onto a target, you can tell a group of weapons to actually attack that target. And if you are locked on and attacking a target, then the turrets can also fire at their maximum range and some of them are set to 1400 meters and others are set to 2000 meters okay so with that out of the way let's take a tour of all the weapons okay so here we have the absolute behemoth of a railgun um this block is absolutely insane so i think this is like a what is it one two three four five six seven eight by two size weapon that is absolutely massive and i really have to hand it to keen software um the models that they have come up with with these turrets is just nothing short of spectacular um i have been waiting for this update for a long time and it is definitely worth the wait so anyway the railgun turret is capable of shooting a projectile at a range of two kilometers and the reload time for this beast is 60 seconds so let's um fire a shell and see what this looks like so we will shoot this thing once <laughs> absolutely amazing animation animation um now one thing i would like to point out with this block is that if you do not have um, enough power to fully power this turret then it will take longer to reload so for example if I only had one battery putting out 12 megawatts then this thing would take three minutes to reload so it you really need to make sure that you have at least 38 megawatts input into this turret to make it you know it's it's most efficient Okay, so moving on, we have our second largest weapon, which is the static artillery. Now, obviously, as the name suggests, this, this turret here is just static. So it doesn't have a turret, it doesn't move or anything like that. And um, as you can see, it has a conveyor port on the bottom and then two conveyor ports on the side. So you, you could have a, a big array of these turrets going and um, yeah, so that looks really nice. So let's um, take a look at this block when we fire this one. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. Man, I really love these guns. These are so cool. Anyway, um, the range for this particular block is two kilometers and the reload time is 12 seconds. Okay, so moving on to the auto cannon turret. Now this is a slightly weaker version of um, the artillery turret, but it has a higher rate of fire. So you can see here that the reload time is six seconds and the range of this turret is 1400 meters. But as I mentioned before, if this turret is controlling itself, then it will only fire at a target within a range of 800 meters. So I won't go ahead and fire this one because it's very similar to all the others um, and you won't really be able to see it anyway because... Well, actually, let's see. Um, let's find our auto cannon turrets. Hmm. Assault cannon turret. Sorry, that's an assault cannon turret. 
So let's shoot that. So obviously the reload starts after you've fired the second barrel. So you fire this barrel, then you fire that barrel, and then the other one will start. Also another nice little feature that they added into these turrets is, let's find this turret here. Um, so we'll find our assault cannon turret. We will control this turret. And if we fire one shell, and then we fire another, you can see a little circle going clockwise around the red um, red circle, which indicates how long it's taking to reload and when it's actually fully reloaded. So yeah, I thought that was a nice little feature. So all of these weapons feature that, um, with exception to, I think, these weapons here. Basically, all the weapons that you can control as a turret have that little feature. So next up we have the artillery turret, which is basically exactly the same as this, except it's on a turret and you have two barrels on either side. So you can rapidly fire two shells and then you've got to wait 12 seconds for after this last barrel has fired before it will reload again. Again, just like the static artillery, it has a range of 2000 meters and the AI range of this turret is 800 meters. Okay, moving on. So here we have all of the small grid weapons. So you can see to the right here I've got all the static small grid weapons and to the left here we've got our small grid turrets. So the first small grid turret is the auto cannon turret. Now this one is quite interesting. This is like a rapid fire turret. So if I go into the control panel here and let's go and control this turret. So auto cannon turret. Um, let's control this beast here. And then if we fire it, you can see that it is a rapid fire turret. So it doesn't really have any reload time. I guess it has maybe like half a second reload time. But it's so small that uh, I wouldn't even really count it as a reload time. Now the range of this one is 800 meters and the AI range of this one is 600 meters. So moving on to the assault cannon turret. Now this is somewhat like this turret in the large grid but it's like the small grid version um so yeah you don't really have artillery in small grid it's just assault cannons and auto cannons but i guess you could consider this like a an artillery and that like a an assault or an auto cannon so yeah i guess you could consider it like that so basically the the range of this weapon is 1400 meters the AI range again, like the other small grid turrets, is also 600 meters. And the reload time for this one is 6 seconds. And then of course, we have our small grid railgun. Now this behaves exactly the same as the large grid railgun. So depending on how much power you have on your grid will determine on um, determine how long this thing takes to reload but the fastest possible reload time you can get out of this thing is 20 seconds I do think it's nice how they've put such a large reload time on these weapons because being on the receiving end of these um, with a constant barrage of yeah it would just be <laughs> really really disastrous so let's give this one a test fire and see how this looks uh, so shoot once absolutely amazing <laughs> i love the animations that they've added with these guns absolutely awesome all right so moving on so here we have a bunch of static weapons so obviously um well including this one what you can do with these is you can make sub grid um weapons so what you can do is you can grab something like a um let's say we can grab a rotor um actually no we need an advanced rotor so let's grab an advanced rotor um, let's get rid of the head on this um, and then what we can do is we can find our rotor so rotor num advanced rotor and then we can add a small head right and then from there what we can do is we can add in one of these these things here probably add it like that and then from there what we can do is we can add in some turrets some guns like this so we can add some guns like that and then you can kind of make your own guns um, obviously you would want another um, like a hinge or something in between this rotor and that sort of thing but yeah it just gives you a little bit of a taste of what you can actually do with this stuff right moving on so obviously here we have the assault cannon um, without a turret just the standard old static assault cannon and this one has a range of 1400 meters and a reload time of six seconds 
and then finally we have the auto cannon now this is exactly the same as the auto cannon turret over here where it doesn't really have a reload time and it's more of a rapid fire weapon and also the range of this one is only 800 meters so it is nice to see some small grid weapons with a range greater than 800 meters um, as that was quite a yeah i mean small grid ships didn't really stand a chance against large grid because it's such a short range so yeah as you can see the, the firing on this is quite rapid it's probably not as rapid as the the turret but it is still quite rapid okay so the final block that i kind of well the final three blocks that i kind of wanted to d discuss about this update was so right here we have the passenger seat but an offset version of it so normally the passenger seat would take up a, um, a two by three um, area whereas this passenger seat takes up a two by two area I'm not sure why they said it's offset I guess it's offset from the center if you have an uneven amount of blocks but yeah I mean it just means that you can fit more of these seats into a small grid ship so yeah that's nice and then finally we have the custom turret controller now, if we go into the G menu here and have a look at the description for this, this block here. So, let's find our custom. So, basically it says the custom turret controller is capable of providing AI behavior to custom built rotor and hinge based turrets. It can also be used to manually control the turret. A custom turret requires at least one rotor slash hinge and one weapon tool or camera to be functional so basically what these allow you to do is build your own custom turrets with say i don't know six of these and five of these and however many rail guns you want to put on the custom turret and then you can actually have this block control them very similar to how a turret like this or like this or like this would behave so it can be completely automated you don't need to put in any scripts and it just works and it's all vanilla and then finally we have the exact same thing but this is obviously the small grid version so yeah um really cool that they added this stuff in and it's all now vanilla and you don't need scripts like um, turret slaving scripts to get your custom turrets working it's all vanilla and it's just absolutely awesome all right so let's move on to the other side and have a look at all the blocks that were added in the paid dlc so now this is basically all the items that are in the paid DLC. So here you can see obviously we have a new skin which is the Woodland Camo skin. And I think it looks really nice. The only issue I have with this skin is that when you go and make it black, it tends to go a little bit weird. So you can see this kind of fuzzy edge. So yeah, no, no black camo for me because you guys know I love my black camo. But hey, I think this skin overall looks really cool. So as you can see, I've actually coloured all of these weapons in that skin. So what I'll do though is I'm going to adjust the time of day offset here so that we have a little bit more light so that we can see more of what we're doing. So here we have two um, new models so these are basically the small grid gatling guns um, so this is the original one that was in the game and this is the new model so they are both exactly the same size so you just get like a new skin for that exact same weapon and then here we have the same thing for the rocket launchers um, these are the non-reloadable rocket launchers so you have to reload these yourself um, obviously this is the standard one that was added um, in the game way back in the day and then this is the new one that was added in the latest update right moving on so now we have these bridge window slopes now there is only two of these windows available so let's go into the G menu and have a look at these windows so we'll have a look at the warfare 2 blocks so yeah as you can see these blocks there is only two windows available at this point in time in the game so yeah it's basically just this 45 degree angle window and then the 45 degree sloped angle window so yeah um, I think these blocks look really cool there's a lot of detail in here and um, yeah it's it's nice to have a different window in the game I am I would really love it if later on they would add more windows because I think you know you're fairly limited with with these windows um, especially in a cockpit or a bridge um, because there can be many different types of windows all right moving on so this block here is the light panel 
Um, now, at first glance, it kind of looks exactly like an LCD that would be colored white or green or whatever color you would want to make it. But this, um, this panel actually acts like an entire light. So if we have a look for our light panel, um, where is that? So yeah, what you can do is you can set this up exactly the same as an interior light. So you can set its radius, um, you can set its fall off, its intensity and its offset. So it's basically like a light panel, but also an interior light. So I think that's a really cool block to add. So you can definitely create some cool things with this. Um, maybe hide it behind one of these window blocks or something like that. Um, and then yeah, it, it would look awesome Now secondly, we have our searchlight now the searchlight is a very interesting block I the way I thought this was going to behave is totally different to the way it actually behaves So when I first saw this block in um, in the screenshots I was like awesome what we can do is we can rotate this block and then point it up and down and have it pointing at whatever we want but it seems to be that that is not the case so if we go into the control panel for this searchlight, so we'll find our searchlight, it basically behaves exactly like a turret would. So if we enable idle movement, then it will basically just move around and point its spotlight at whatever it feels necessary. So it's, it, it's basically set up like a weapon. So I guess when something is attacking your base, then it will basically... Um, yeah, it'll basically lock onto that and then keep pointing at that. So I kind of feel like this is a little bit of a missed opportunity. I wish Keen would let you manually control this and point it to wherever you want and then kind of lock it in place so that you could, you know, put these throughout your base and then point at certain locations within your base. But still a very cool block and um, yeah, I definitely think it's yeah awesome so all right moving on so next up we have the heat vent now the heat vent is a another really interesting block um not only because of the fact that you know it's another block that you can add to walls and it has very cool um features inside so you could put these things throughout your base and um yeah give some detail to otherwise boring walls but what this block actually does is it will open up these vents and depending on how much power is being drawn from your grid it will actually change color so if we go into this block here so let's find our vent uh, vent so let's have a look at this so you can see um, the color at minimal load the color at maximum load and it will basically change colors based upon how much load is on the electrical grid so for example if we grab ourselves a weapon here so let's grab ourselves a railgun um, where is my railgun so let's grab a railgun and let's go ahead and place that there so now what's happening is this grid is charging that railgun and you can see that this is actually opening up um, so it's not opening up fully because we're not drawing that much power Although, that is a bit interesting, so 38 megawatts, okay, yeah, that's strange. I think it it's based on a ratio between how much power you have on your grid and how much power draw there is. So if I go ahead and I actually add in another couple of railguns here and get them to charge, so let's add some more railguns in here, you can see that this thing opens up fully and because more of the total power on the grid is actually going into that railgun. Alright, let's get rid of all these railguns because we don't need them. Right, okay, so let's move on to the next block. So the next block is actually a helm block. So this is pretty cool, it's like a control panel, um, you know, and as you can see your engineer is kind of standing on this, um, this block here. I can't really zoom in though because, wait, do I, yeah, no, I can't really zoom in too much because obviously this grid is very large, so let's exit this block here, and um, yeah, it's just another little console, so you can basically use this as a cockpit or a control seat, um, exactly the same as you would um, normally. Now also what we have here is a passenger bench, so this is a small grid block and you can add this to your ship, small grid ships and it's just another place to kind of sit down I guess. Um, I believe it only seats one character, well yeah that kind of makes sense. But also what we have is we have a small grid version of the helm. Now as far as I can tell the model is exactly the same, it's like the exact same size, 
um, but except for this one is yeah this one here is a three by three whereas this one here is just a, a one by one block okay so moving on to the new reactors that have been added to the game so this one here is the small warfare reactor so obviously this is available once you download the um the dlc and pay for the dlc and as you can see the ports are in the exact same location as the standard reactor in the game so if we just bring up that reactor now so we bring up the standard nuclear reactor you can see that the ports are in the exact same orientation except for the fact that this model looks 10 times cooler I'm really happy with the way that they've done this it looks absolutely awesome um, and then obviously we have the small grid version of the small warfare reactor and again the ports are in the exact same location as the vanilla ones that were added into the game way back in the day and yeah, I just think it's um, a really cool looking object. There are no animations as far as I can tell when you turn these things off. What I think would be really cool if, is if someone could mod this so that these parts here actually retract in when you turn this um, reactor off. That would be pretty awesome. So we'll turn this back on. Okay, now moving on. Now this behemoth of a block here is the new large grid warfare reactor um large reactor i should say so i think this block looks absolutely insane um this reactor is a little bit different to the vanilla reactor so if we bring out the vanilla reactor here um the large grid one and i will place one there so with this reactor here you can kind of see that this reactor has a port on either side there and it also has a port on the top and the bottom the new reactor however it does not have a port at the front although it does have a port on the rear and it also has a port on the top and then it also has another port on the bottom so I am glad that they made this block the same size as the old reactor so I can kind of shoehorn this into my scenario really easily and um, yeah so I think they've done really well with the modeling of this block it is absolutely and utterly gorgeous and then of course we have the small grid version of the large warfare reactor so this large warfare reactor again very cool so this I believe has a port on the top and the bottom just like the large grid standard reactor so if we bring out the large or the small grid large reactor so let's bring this one out so yeah you can see that this one also has a port on either side so I think it's yeah these new reactor blocks I'm definitely going to make use of these in my worlds for sure um, then moving along we have our new hangar doors um, so it's nice to see some um, changes of these hangar doors because I felt like the old ones were quite boring um, and these ones you can obviously change the skin on and it goes all the way down which is really nice so we have three different types of these blocks so the first one is the warfare hangar door windowed so obviously we have a window in this one and then next to that we have the standard warfare door which has a more plain texture and then after that we have the warfare hangar door 2 um, this has a li little bit more of an interesting texture although I do notice that you can kind of see through it so I dare say they'll probably fix that in a later update so again another really cool update um, yeah and I think I will make use of this block as well and then moving on we have the warfare battery so again another really cool block there is no real changes between this battery and the standard battery as you can see the maximum output is exactly the st same and then we also have the same maximum stored power so nothing has really changed there other than the aesthetics the aesthetic on the bottom is exactly the same here as as it is at the top um, but we have a nice aesthetic on the side and on the back a little bit plain but still it's loads better than the standard battery that's been added into the game so again I'm definitely going to update my base with this battery because I think it just looks absolutely awesome and then moving on we have our new doors so these are the half sliding hatch doors so as you can see you know the hatch kind of slides open like that um, yeah the, there are two by two or there are two by one block here and you have like a half door here and then also over here you have like the fully enclosed version of that door not sure 
what you could use this door for um, where you couldn't use this door but still I like the fact that they have added a little bit of variety here um, and it looks like we've got a little bit of an armored texture or a sci-fi interior wall texture happening here on the side so yeah another really cool looking block and then finally we have the new thrusters that have been added into the game so these thrusters are exactly the same size as the original ones that were added into the game so what i'll do here is i'll find my ion thrusters we'll go all blocks and then we'll grab these new ion thrusters here so as you can see they are exactly the same size as the regular ion thrusters um, but yeah they just look much much cooler and as far as i can tell they have the same amount of components so here you can see that they do have exactly the same amount of components so it's always nice when they they do that in the game there's no like um pay to win type of deal it's just basically a visual difference in in the thrusters so here we have the large grid small thruster and obviously the large grid large thruster then over here we have the small grid small thruster and then we have the small grid large thruster so yeah i will definitely be making use of these in my ships and i think they're um very very cool looking blocks um what i've done here is i've actually gone ahead and jerry rigged these thrusters into one of my existing ion ships here this is the corvette i'll leave a link in the video description for this ship if you want to check it out yourselves um, but yeah I think the thrusters look absolutely awesome and these big thrusters on the bottom are just yeah <laughs> they look really really cool and you can see that we have a flame that comes out here and here and then here as well um, obviously though because we are on a planet and ion thrusters don't really work in gravity the the drive plume isn't that great so I'd have to go into space to kind of, kind of demonstrate that so I think I'll do that now and then after that we can finish up the video okay well here we are in space and as you can see I have the exact same ship with the new thrusters on the left and the old thrusters on the right so let's go ahead and take a look at the animations for these thrusters i think what they've done with these animations is really cool i think they look absolutely awesome especially these large thrusters with the four little thrusters on the corner of each each of those thrusters and then as you can see when we accelerate the thrusters just look absolutely awesome so i think they've done a really good job with these th these thrusters and um i look forward to converting a lot of my ships to these thrusters later on now one other thing I kind of wanted to cover just before we end the video is um, they have made a fair few changes to the way that explosions work as well. So first off they made a change with what kind of explosions happen depending on how much ammunition is in cargo containers and then also depending on how much fuel is in a hydrogen tank will determine how vigorously it will explode so obviously if you have a full hydrogen tank it will explode much more violently than a hydrogen tank that is only half full and the same goes with ammunition so if you have a, a large cargo container for example that is full of ammunition versus one that is half full of ammunition the one with more ammunition will obviously explode explode more violently so yeah there is that change as well the other thing that they changed is when you damage a hydrogen tank so previously if you were to grind a hydrogen tank past its red line it would go ahead and lose all of its fuel um, but now that is not the case so you can actually grind a tank past its um, usable point so let's um, let's go ahead and build a hydrogen tank here for example so what I'll do is I'll just place a hydrogen tank uh, somewhere on this ship although I don't know where I can place this thing all right let's um let's place it here for example okay so you can see that it's filling up automatically but if I I will wait for this thing to completely fill how long until that takes um, 50% okay so it's not going to fill itself up because I don't have anything else attached to this grid so if I was to go and grind this thing and then we grind it past the functional line and then I go ahead and weld it back up you can see that it still contains fuel 
So, and then if we go into the control panel here, you can see that it has lost a little bit of hydrogen. So when these things are damaged, you can see that they actually leak fuel. So we'll grind it past that. And right now it is actually leaking fuel out. So the fuel kind of slowly leaks out, but you don't lose all of it the instant you grind it down past the functional point. So let's have a look at how much fuel we lost in that little exercise. So yeah, we lost about 2%. But still, I think this is a really good feature because it means that you can take over hydrogen tanks much easier. So previously what I used to do is um, weld a connector to them and then actually transport the fuel out of them. Whereas now obviously what you can do is you can just attach them directly to your base and then withdraw the fuel from them that way and just grind them down and then re-weld them back up and then take ownership of them. So yeah, that is a pretty cool feature. So in a separate video, what I'll do is I'll actually go over all of the weapons um, and all the damage and the new targeting system. I won't go over it in this video because this video is getting to be quite long. So anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like this content, then definitely consider leaving a like and uh, don't forget to subscribe so that you do not miss any more videos. All right, guys, I will see you next time.